question for the both of you today is, where did the very initial idea for what the horse eats come from? I grew up in Vietnam and my dad told me this story almost weekly with the attempt that I would not grow up be a thief. <laughs> and that was like since I was five years old. And I always want to tell people about that, but then there was no opportunity at the right time that um, would be good for me to do. So after the tell of Lady Deacon, I think it is the right time for me to tell a story that would be fit for a chamber of opera. And the idea of chamber opera is from the concept of um, financial sensitivity. And, and part of what I'm doing in part of the society, the organization that we're working for, we tend to produce a lot of more things, a lot of shows, a lot of opera or opera scene, and money is always the big issue. So to write another grand opera is almost like reaching for the moon. <laughs> and, well, or maybe you should say rich for the sun. So because of that, the concept of writing the chamber opera is very, very clear. Then suddenly this story is just perfect, right? So when you had that initial story, how did the two of you decide what elements would be developed or lengthened to make it into that full work? Well, I, I told Andre about this story for many, many times. And sometimes we say, well, you know, story, it's a, appeared to be short. So how can we make it last for an hour? And, and it's not that simple in the way. So she and I start talking about what should we add in there? What element should we create it to make it into the story? And, um, we start from there. Well, you know, um, so the story of the horse tender being sewn inside the horse's stomach was the uh, historical fact, the story that Fan's father told him. And I, the first time I heard it, I was really struck by the drama, the, the cruelty of the story. And when we shared our stories with men, with friends and families, uh, everyone has a different reaction to it. Of course, historically, Vietnamese people would consider that a story about cruelty. Uh, but we don't want to, to tell a story or to write a, 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 a chamber opera to criticize one and then to praise another. We want the story to be, um, ne uh, to be neutral, non-judgmental, because mm -hmm. we, I, I, we can see the, the relevance uh, the lessons that we can learn from such a dramatic story. And, um, and so we have to add details to make, this, to make sense of that cruelty, to make sense of the action. Besides, we tell stories to reach out, uh, to connect with people. Mm -hmm. It's not good to condemn anyone at all yeah. in the story. And then besides that, victims of war is common. And, and sometimes it is very, very difficult to come up uh, with the concept or with an idea that uh, blaming on some people or framing on people for cause the atrocity. But on the other hand, to use the story as an excuse to tell about human behavior, how people do things to each other which is much more important. And, and that's why in the part of the libretto, toward the end, um, the Japanese captain, the wife and the villager, they talked about of a self-reflection that what have they done or not doing to the right. And, and they, at the, at the, at the moment, they think that is the right thing to do and the pursuit of it. And sometimes people pursue things because lack of profound thinking, lack of, um, of, of uh, take a moment to judge things 
and because of that, they do at um, at rust at the uh, yeah at haste. So because of that, it happened the way it is. But then toward the end, when things actually happen, everyone reflect a moment that perhaps could be regret. Yeah, I think that's one thing that the both of you do so brilliantly in the libretto is that you'll have the characters acting as they are in society and they'll be interacting with each other. But then you get these moments where they step away and you see them having that internal conflict as they make these, you know, difficult, impossible even decisions. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you engineered those two levels to work off each other in the libretto? Well, you know, um, right from the beginning, we already uh, created this story with non metal, right? And so I will, will find suggested to have each character reflecting. And that's what I did. I had each character, uh, the, re the, re the reflection for each character is there. And um, instead of having all of them singing one by one, uh, it would take too long. We don't have a lot of time and it's not so interesting. It, it would sound more like lamenting if everyone would take a moment <laughs> and, and sit and stand there, you know. And so it's fun's idea to have them sing together, pair them. Uh, and, and I thought that was a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a historical story. Um, it's easy for me to take side with the, my historical knowledge about uh, the relationship between Vietnam and Japan, or what Japanese soldier did in Vietnam at the time, is very easy for me to portray him as a, a villain, right? And I had to resist that temptation to have him, um, to, to give him the humane side, the sweet side. Why did he give him that with mm. the opening song when he sings about home? And in the re reflection, I also have him think about what he's doing. Mm. Uh, so the reflection, uh, the main goal is to raise questions about human nature, why, how we use culture as a code to impose upon others and what the consequences of that or what the impact that uh, it could lead to. Um, so that's the reflection. Wow, that's, that is one of my favorite sequences and I can't wait to see it on stage. 